into the intricacies and the complications in terms of um, dealing with that kind of legislation. Thank you. Well, thank you, um, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Just to repeat, as I've said earlier, the list has been distributed. It's a draft list. There are certain pieces of legislation that we, at this moment, cannot allocate to a specific committee. As I've reported earlier, the matter is being discussed with the leader of government business office and within hopefully within the next two weeks we'll know exactly where that will be allocated so if you check your inboxes um, andrew have sent it out this morning it should be with all the chief whips but honorable deputy speaker some of those pieces of legislation um, also have an impact on the post 94 dispensation and if you just repeal and Parliament take a decision, which it shouldn't do, is to say that let's repeal all of them in one go. You will have the collapse of post-94 legislation because the primary acts was pre-94 and certain amendments was done subsequently since 1994 to those pieces of legislation. So we must really look at it very, very carefully so that we do not have unintended consequences, not only on institutions of state, but also on private companies in the country. So those are the, it's some of the intricacies that we are dealing with. Um, the second one, Honorable Deputy Speaker, deals with the allocation of venues. That is deemed to be an administrative function. But... I see the secretary is here, and I want to make a request that the person who's responsible for identifying these venues, um, that I requested already a meeting to meet with the person. Uh, I think it's Mr. Sipoko, right? So that I can personally go and have a look at some of the venues, because when, from where I'm sitting, I cannot comment on what the state of the venues are that's outside of Parliament so that we have a clearer understanding of the challenges that members face when they go to those type of venues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honourable Frolic. Um, then I have um, Honourable Mani. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, and good morning to you and uh, to the House. Uh, if you will just indulge me, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, because I'm still new here and in this role, so I want to push an envelope a bit on the issue of the interpretation uh, based on the fact that my understanding is that all of us here are public representatives. I have a view that uh, uh, the issue of interpret interpretation goes beyond what has been discussed and goes to the actual public which we are representing, which has got a problem following the proceedings uh, in terms of the oral replies. For instance, this afternoon, when the president replies, uh, <clears throat> the top table will read a particular number to say president replies to a question from honorable member X, Y, Z, and the president just replies. Now, if you are sitting at home, interested in what the president is replying to, you have no clue what the question was. So I think that uh, is a disadvantaging the public, which we supposed to be representing here. So I was going to propose chair, that uh, we try and deal with that differently going forward so that either the top table reads the question uh, that uh, the president or any other member is replying to. If that is not done by the top table, the person who asked the question must read that question or, or a combination of whilst the question is being addressed, it gets flighted, something. Uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the monitors, but uh, to just uh, have somebody responding to something which only the person, uh, only members here yeah, that are privileged to have the question know what the, the response is relating to. Uh, I want to propose, Chair, that, uh, and I'm just pushing the envelope on the issue of interpretation, that it can't just be the interpretation for the convenience of members of parliament it's got to include the people that are representing. So I want to appeal on behalf of all the people that we represent that in order for them to get a full benefit of what the responses relate to, there has to be something that talks to what exactly was the question. 
So I'm suggesting, Chair, that uh, can we please, uh, this might not be, I might just be told some protocol that no, raise that in that particular committee, but wh whatever committee, the audience is most likely the same audience. So I just think uh, uh, let's bend the uh, knee a bit for the, for the benefit of the public and ensure that whatever is being replied to is known by the people that are watching TV and watching the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mani. You, you raise a very valid point. Um, and I think this is something that it, it has been raised before, the question of the question, um, the initial question. Um, so I think that is something that we will, um, speaker has joined us, that we will have a look into um, with possibilities such as flighting the question, perhaps. Um, the question of interpret interpretation services on the broadcasting is a bit more complex because that's not necessarily in the hands of Parliament, but it is something that we can definitely um, investigate. Thank you. Honourable Horn. Yeah, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. On that law, on the, uh, the first point raised, I recall that pre the fire, um, that the questions were flighted. So maybe it's something that was lost in the fire. Uh, the ability to do so, but I agree. Now, I just wanted to quickly say that in terms of translation services, Madam Deputy Speaker, of course, the the vacancies as well as the, the quality is something that we must attend to and which rests with you. But, for example, yesterday I got a clear sense that because there's not a, a, a huge culture of people speaking anything but English during oral question sessions, that the, the translation people, I don't know whether they were out for coffee when when um, somebody didn't speak English, but literally when the, when the question was about to conclude, they started mumbling something. So quite possibly, uh, my, my, my suggestion is that we must also look into who is managing that whole process and that there's installed a bit more uh, discipline in so that we don't find them I don't want to say asleep, but but not uh, attending to the process as they should. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Honourable Horn. That is indeed so. And I have already um, had meetings in terms of refresher courses and looking at booth behaviour, all those kinds of things. Um, then there was another hand. Um, uh, uh, Honourable Sotole. Uh, thank you, Honourable uh, uh, Table Speaker. Uh, good morning to, to the Speaker and to Honourable Members. Uh, Honourable Chair, my, my mind is just uh, repeating what other members have said about the issue of, of interpreters, because I'm worried about the translations. Because if you listen to what, what the, 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 the interpreters are translated, it actually harm us because if we are interpreting from the from English to Isisul or from Africans to Isisul, when when we are saying something that is not have been said by English at in Isisul, it actually harm us because we know and and I'm I'm proud of my language. If we are interpreting my my my, my language. In a bad way, sometimes it doesn't that doesn't occur well. So now I think the capacity of of interpreters and the the issue of uh, of uh, of capac capacitating them, I think, is should be a priority because it actually is, it 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 occur it occur it not occur well. And the other one, honor honor chairperson that I'm trying to check uh, from this forum, the issue of. Uh, Notice of motion. Because I don't know, since I was here, I think it's now 15 years, we always say, the, the, we always have the, the motion, notice of motion. But there is no way, nowhere where we, we can say it's now we are debating that uh, that motion. So I, I don't know why why do you have that, that motion in, in, in our program. I think we have to, to deal with it. We have to talk about it because it is actually it become a useless uh, 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 practice. Thank you, Rich. 
Thank you, Honourable Satole. Yes, um, firstly, I, I really take to heart what you say about the um, capacity of our interpreters, and I think that um, it is important that that will be included in, in the um, document that I will be presenting to this forum, um, that we also look at that. And then in terms of um, the notices of motion and never being debated, I think that is part of... Um, Many the well, it is a frustration for many members um, because you will note that something like thirty motions are done on a motions day, so those then have to be scheduled in the order in which they were actually submitted. Um, so it is a process. We try to include that within the possible well where we have many plenaries, um, but yes. Um, Mr. Tkasu, Speaker, I think this is something that we should perhaps have a look at, that we just go through the motions of going submitting motions without really paying attention to it and it actually having effect. Welcome to RT Select Times. That's it for now, guys, and thank you so much for watching this video. And please tell us what you think about this on the comment section below. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more.